Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Waterclay Impressions. This week we are going to learn how to do seaside cityscape. This reference was taken near Tron Island. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. I will provide the drawing template and reference. Check my video description to download it so you guys can uh, follow with me with this tutorial. So when it comes to drawing, look for uh, bigger shapes or the major shapes in your reference. So the major shapes or the bigger shapes in a reference are the sky and the water. And the next one would be the CN Tower. So I first block in uh, where my composition sits. So I don't want to split it in half. So I split it into one, one by three. And I blocked in the CN Tower. And it helps me to compare other shapes in my uh, reference. And you don't have to be uh, that accurate with your buildings, but the only thing you have to be accurate is the CN Tower. It should look as a CN Tower. Since it's a background, I'll just give impression as it is. So the only problem um, in here in this uh, painting would be there's a lot of things happening. So there's a beautiful cityscape and there's a really nice uh, midground with a small house in it. And there's a beautiful water reflections. Um, in the which just resists from foreground to the background so we have to simplify in a way that we have to balance it out and convey a story and make our painting works i was a little bit scared to pick this subject but uh, so be it you know it's always good to uh, pick some challenging subjects and to learn from it i'll quickly you know block some of the darker shapes where the shadow goes just to see where everything goes and let's put down our first wash and uh, there's nothing little magical about the uh, sky it's just uh, cobalt blue any kind of sky i do i use cobalt blue and i'm also going a little bit stronger and uh, as watercolors it fades away really fast so i'm making sure that i'm adding a lot of blue at the top and there's a gradient there and you can see in distance in the reference uh, or if you go outside and check the sky there's a glow at the bottom of the horizon so I make sure that my wash is really weak at the bottom. So I'll connect that wash and I'll paint the water. And I'll start with the cobalt blue. And since at the distance, you know, the consistency is a little bit lighter. And as it comes down, I'm going to make it darker and darker and darker. So there's a gradient from the horizon uh, to our lead in. And even though it looks severe now, and this is going to fade off really, really fast. So since my paper is wet, this would be a really nice uh, way to add colors because uh, this gives on a wet on wet technique. So if you put a color in it and it's going to give this uh, beautiful edges uh, for our painting. So I did the block the trees and uh, before it dries out, the water dries out, I'm adding some impressions of waves. And um, this is the easiest way to make uh, water as it is because you can see uh, it's really flat in our reference. So I'll start with the bigger shape first. So I'll start with the CN Tower. For the CN Tower, there's a lot of warmth in it. So I'm going to be using raw amber. And since I see raw amber in other buildings, I will block it really fast. So whenever you paint any kind of cityscape, uh, look for major shape so what i mean by that most of the shapes in a reference are rectangles so make sure you see everything as a rectangle don't see as a building so once you block the rectangles with the base colors in it then we can add the shadows the midtown and everything to create a 3d look so that's what i'm trying to do and i'm also making sure to vary my colors i don't want everything to look uh, the same colors and you can also see in the reference, uh, if you squint your eyes and if you see the reference, there's a lot of blues, there's a lot of greens, and there's also a lot of French ultramarine blue in there as well. When you do cityscapes, make sure to leave a lot of white bits, and uh, that helps to give this uh, staccato look, and it also helps to create this uh, beautiful uh, impression of buildings. So I add a little bit of darker tones before it dries out, uh, just to see uh, where everything goes. Even though my values look uh, really, really severe now and it's going to fade off really fast as well. So I'm going to trying to um, like paint this uh, city, cityscape in background as fast as I can. So I don't want to, I jumped on from the cities, uh, from the background to the midground now. 
for the mid ground for the trees and at the bottom i'm going to increase the pigment consistency to have the 3d look so i'm going to wet the paper and uh, then i'll put my mid down value for the trees and this will give variety of edges for my trees and uh, in toronto especially in canada this kind of trees are really common here so it kind of like the leaves kind of hanging from the branches um, and it also gives a really nice impressions for uh, painters to paint these trees there is one thing i hate doing is trees and uh, for some reason i will make it work in a way that at the end of the day it should look like a tree so that's what i'm trying to do and in the building uh, for the wall and uh, i'm using a little bit of uh, warmer tone and as in any traditional painting uh, the warmer tones come in uh, front and the cooler tones uh, back in distance so that's why I introduced a lot of cooler tone to the cityscape and I'm going to be introducing a lot of pigment consistency. I mean darker pigment in the mid ground and the foreground. And you can see as soon as we added that uh, darker tone in the mid ground everything pops up. I did regret uh, putting those uh, tires on the water because it disturbed my composition a little bit and um, I thought it would be a great element for the foreground but it, it didn't end up working so I left it as it is. So the tires are for the boats which they can dock in or the ships which comes in there. So let's focus on the background. The background is floating now as though it's kind of like a floating city. So let's anchor that. So the way we can anchor the cityscape and distance is adding some uh, tones at the bottom of the buildings. And you can also see I'm also quickly uh, connecting that shape with the shadows of the lighting as well. And you can see we started as a basic shape as a rectangle. As soon as we add that shadow, it gives that 3D look for our buildings. And I'm making sure to leave some lot of white bits uh, in distance. And if you try to paint as it is in the reference, uh, good luck with it and because it, it can be super confusing and you might be um, uh, lost in detail. So make sure that you squint your eyes and you can also change everything as it is. The only thing that have to be uh, super accurate in our reference is the CN Tower. So the buildings or anything else, you can make up stuff. And I would have left it as it is, uh, as my artistic mind, the vanity prevents it. I did add a little bit of details and distance. And it's really hard to add uh, details in a cityscape building because it's so huge and we are doing in a line by 14 um, paper, so it's hard to convey a lot of details in it. So I'm uh, quickly adding the shadows for the CN Tower. As soon as I add the shadows, you can see the lighting starts appearing in our painting. So. This is one of, uh, one of the saying I learned from uh, an artist I was watching a video of it. As a painter, you're not painting a picture. So what exactly you're doing is you are painting light and shadows. So as soon as you paint light and shadows, the painting come alive and the realism comes alive. So next time when you paint, and this also helps you to think everything in light and shadows instead of you know, painting as it is. And uh, I jumped to the Bitcoin building, even though there's a little bit of tone in the building, I left it white. So the reason being is it creates that contrast between light and shadows and it, it is really pleasing to eyes. And uh, so I added a lot of darker tone at the bottom of the mid ground. So now I'm doing a sharper reflection. So the reflections are darker in the foreground. As it comes down, it gets blurrier. So I'm adding the paper in foreground as you can see. Now I do some zigzag lines using my uh, using my paint and there's also a lot of green in it. So I'm using uh, uh, red, uh, Radian and a little bit of green in it and a little bit of French ultramarine blue to cool it off a little bit. And as you can see, uh, as soon as we add the reflections, the whole painting came alive. I'm making sure that uh, I'm getting, uh, I'm anchoring that mid ground. So I added a little bit of darker value at the bottom. So now it's a matter of fact, bring some eyelids back. So there's a lot of darker shapes in the water, but I'll bring it up using white paint. And as I said, I'm going to take my white paint and bring some of the eyelids back in the cityscape. And that gives a illumination of light in distance. 
and you can see there's a big part in the CN tower and I added that using white paint and um, I'll do this process till I'm happy with it and uh, like when you do this kind of white paint stuff uh, it is really fun to do it you know don't overdo it because you can keep on going with it uh, sometimes I feel that I add more so I say to myself uh, not to add more so now uh, we added some little bit of white paint this is what I was talking about breaking the dark shape uh, and the water so I did that using white paint as well and there's also a couple of eyelets on the midground building as well I'll do that and there is one pole and I want to add that uh, pole because it just breaks that dark big shape in the foreground. So for the tires I'm adding a little bit of eyelets and uh, I think that's it guys. So we almost are end of our painting. You can see um, in our painting even though we started really bright and uh, the painting kind of dry really light. So that's how watercolor it is. So you can see even my water looks faded so I'm going to increase a little bit of pigment consistency in horizon so I want to create the gradient so there's a distance but if I would have done this painting again I would have uh, added a little bit of uh, glazing on my water so now it's your turn uh, take my drawing template and reference and uh, let's see what you can come up with and I also add a little bit of uh, lead in and that's it folks and uh, I will see you in the next one Thanks again for watching this Seaside Cityscape video tutorial with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. If you want me to cover any other subjects in watercolors, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, please do share with your friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting folks.